first of all, I think your analysis was very straight line. History doesn't run in a straight line. Kid, you cannot tell your neighbor he is stealing ducks when you are stealing phones. As High Commissioner, I was wrong. As Charandas Prasad, I reacted naturally how any person would have. I did not come here for, for, for that kind of abuse. I did not come here for that kind of abuse. If you're gonna go along that road, I'll walk off. But it's all okay once they're talking. If they were talking, I could not have been here today. You got ADHD, uh -huh. ADHD. I got I got that. Oh, no, calm down, down, calm down. I think I've done enough in terms of taking our team um, out of trouble from losing. Come on, Lou Taylor. You, 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 got, you got screwed. I'm reading the script now, and the first person that comes to my mind to play a detective, yes, but an erratic detective, Mickey Rodrick. Because nobody wants to hear me talk about Why are you not freaking something in here? Why a man and a woman? No, okay, now you deal with that. You deal with that. We must encourage platforms like this because it brings together different people and allows for discussions. To, to take place in our country on a multiplicity of fundamental issues. Uh, Kingdom, you apologizing for no, something no, 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 you no, think no, no. I did is wrong. I don't no, want no. you to do that and you should not have done that. Hi, good evening and happy Easter to you for wherever you're joining us from. It's a wonderful day today. And um, tonight we have some special guests in the studio with us. I would like to say welcome to the Freddie Kisun Show. And I'm your co-host as usual, Akash Prasad, but Freddie has asked me to sit here today. Um, we're going to have a wonderful discussion on, on Easter, the significance of Easter in Christianity, and perhaps touch on some of the, 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 the traditional cultural things that happens around Easter, like kite flying and and, and and cross buns and so on, where these things come in from. Um, I would like to say good evening to Mr. Freddie Kisun, as I said, who has asked me to sit in in here. To my, this evening, our, our guests are two wonderful gentlemen, and to my immediate left sits Reverend Dr. Ronald McGarrell from the Family Federation for World, for World Peace. And to his left sits Dr. the Reverend Dr. Alfonso Porter, of the Church of the Nazarene, and to 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 um to my extreme um, sits Mr. Freddie Kisun. Good night, gentlemen. Happy Easter to you all. Good evening to you. Good night Happy to you. Easter to you too. Wonderful, okay. um, Mr. Kisun. I would like for you to, to take the lead tonight this evening. Well, mm -hmm. I am not a religious person at all, although I have known Ronald for a very long time. You'll be surprised to know how long I've known him. Somebody that I like. A Guyanese that I like and respect, and a Guyanese I think of quality. I am sure um, Pastor Porter and Body, the same quality, has been a chairman of the Ghana Council of Churches. When you have reached that status as chairman of the Ghana Council of Churches, then you, you, you deserve the respect of this nation. But I will give way to you because you are a religious person. <laughs> Your father was a pandit. I am the least religious of the four here. I may even consider myself a Philistine, so <laughs> I will give back over to you. Right. Actually, um, you talk about Pandit. My dad and, and Pastor McGarrell shared a very close relationship. They were um, um, they were peace ambassadors together, working together. Um, him as a Hindu and pastor in in his capacity as the um, Reverend for the Family Federation for World Peace. But Pastor McGarrell, let me start with you first, then the where the, the origins of easter is obviously rooted in 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 in, in the biblical scripture mm -hmm. and it has a lot to do with the with the with, with with jesus christ and the crucifixion and then his ultimate resurrection mm -hmm. share your thoughts on this on this topic please yeah Christ was crucified. All because the people 
that God has prepared for thousands of years. Still, when the Messiah came, they didn't recognize him and they did not treat him the way he should have been treated. He was nailed to a cruel, what I would say is a cruel cross. He was nailed and experienced the pain and agony of, of suffering. People did not understand what that really means. Even today, people don't fully understand what the presence of Christ on meant on this on this earth. In order to eliminate Christ went through suffering, but also to eliminate the suffering of mankind. So we are living in a crucial time when we have to reflect on these issues and work towards achieving the ideal results for mankind. We have to learn how to love the Creator, first of all. If we don't love the Creator, then we wouldn't be living a substantial and an ideal life. So, for the last 2,000 years, mankind has been going through Easter, Resurrection, and all of these processes, but still have not achieved the, the, the desired result. As a matter of fact, there's only suffering that's going on all the time. And we also got to be very careful that a war don't start. That can destroy most of humanity. If we really sincerely look at what's happening, we got to pray sincerely. We got to become people who are indeed loved the way the, the Creator designed us. He designed us because we need to experience the real power of this awesome universe. It is something that we, a lot of people don't really even understand. For example, like Jesus said to those people right in his midst, he says, love God with all your heart, mind, body and soul. How many people do you think understand what that really means? Yeah. But nevertheless, we have to make a determined effort to accomplish this ideal because this universe has to accomplish its true purpose so that we can experience eternal joy and happiness. The Creator doesn't just want a little bit here and there. For, mm -hmm. He wants people to be in a position where we could experience the real essence of this creation idea. Wonderful. Uh, Pastor Porter, where do you, um, I would like to put that question to you also. But before before I say that, let me, you know, they always say love your neighbor, mm -hmm. right? And and for the viewers out there, Pastor Porter is our neighbor because right next to TBN Studios is where the Church of the Nazarene is. And it will be a miss of us not to have someone as, like our neighbor who's a well, who's a learned individual. Yes. But on that same, um, that same topic of the origin of Easter. But before he, he comes in, mm -hmm. um, my daughter took guitar lessons below the church of the Nazarene, it was all part of the Nazarene. Right next door? Yeah. yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Wow. <laughs> so Freddie used to go up in the church too? No, I just <laughs> dropped my dog. I, 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 um, I, keep, I keep away before um, God cast me out of his church. So I used to drop my dog and pick her back. But um, Pastor, uh, Reverend? Okay. Don't, don't worry. Well, you won't be cast out. Okay. You'll be welcome. No, once Ronald and, Ronald and I have been friends for more than 30 years, and I'm sure he would protect me. 
Well, good evening to all of you. A joy to be joining with you to, to share a little bit on um, this important and, and relevant topic um, this evening. Um, the term Easter, the word Easter is not really there in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. um, what is there is the term resurrection. Um, and uh, there are those who, who, who say that Easter was really a pagan festival that somehow got incorporated into the um, Christian culture. Um, but coming back to where, where, where it started, in the Genesis, the first book of the Bible, when Adam and Eve had sinned, God says that he will raise up one who will bruise the head of the serpent. And then centuries later, the, the, the prophets spoke about a Messiah mm -hmm. who will come and that he will deliver uh, the people of God from, from sin and, um, and, and shape them and mold them into God's righteousness. So that actually happened at the birth of Jesus Christ. Uh, Christ came, but he came as a vulnerable uh, babe, um, having to depend on his parents. In fact, born in the in a most lowly and maybe unhygienic place in in, in a stable uh, with animals there, but that was the one. That, that God had identified as his chosen person to, to deliver. And so that was his message. He preached that, and uh, Ron was right when he preached on, on love. I believe that's the essence of it all. Um, love God and, and, and love your neighbor too. And uh, I'm glad that I'm a neighbor and I've benefited from the church being right next door to you from, from, from time to time. Um, so that's, oh, that's... We, fixed, we fixed your pipe. Um, uh, Akash and I came out to the studio. Uh, it was and a we saw Friday this, night after uh, 10. It was after 10, just uh -huh. pipe gushing, burst yeah. and was gushing gallons and gallons. Whoa. So you would not have got Ooh, any water in the today. church. So, wow. um, so we saved the church, right? So, right. <laughs> so you're a good neighbor. Yeah, you're Freddie looking yeah. for points. So when yeah. the day comes, you're going to say, this man fixed my pipe. Yes, you will get, get it. Because, <laughs> that, because at that hour, none of us would have been around no. to, yeah. to, to see it. And we got uh, soaked, right? And, uh, <laughs> and if, yeah, even if we called GWI. Yeah. I called them the very night uh, they came the next uh, morning. Okay. But we fixed it tonight. Right. So, um, so <laughs> And that was on Goodly neighbor. Yeah, the, so, the, the Lord sent us. <laughs> right. <laughs> but go ahead, Pastor. So um, that was his, his message. Um, of course, he came into a society that is not too much different from ours. There's some pluralistic elements mm -hmm. in it. There were other religions. Um, there was a, a, a political... Uh, situation there where um, these people who were from Israel were oppressed and um, so they thought that Jesus was coming to be a, a deliverer deliver them from the political oppression that they were under but he was into deeper stuff than that he wanted to deliver them from that which dragged them down into sin mm -hmm. and wrongdoing constantly and um, he gave his life as, as a ransom. God had declared that if you sin, you will die. If you go against him, he will punish you. And this Jesus stood in the place for all humankind. And instead of each one paying for your own sins, he took on the sins of everyone and, and gave up his life. So... It wasn't that, well, they thought that they had murdered him and killed him. That was really the plan of God. And so Jesus is called the Lamb of God in the Judaistic religion. That was, if you sinned, then you would have had to get an animal and get the blood. Yeah. 
and then the priest would would dip his hands in in the basin that's scarred the blood and sprinkle upon all of you and say your your sins are forgiven. But with Christ coming now and 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 dying on on that cross and his blood being shed, it wasn't just now that your sins are are being forgiven. He, he makes it possible that your sins could be cleansed completely. Mm -hmm. and you, you're delivered and uh, and so that is the message of 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 his crucifixion and then as we go into uh easter sunday when he's risen from the dead well <laughs> i like to say that you can't keep a good man down <laughs> literally uh, you can't keep him down so they they, they intended mm -hmm. to kill him and intended to kill the religion mm -hmm. kill this newborn uh, faith that people were putting in God and trusting in God. They had hoped that with the death of this one, it, because dying on a cross was a cruel form of punishment. It was intended to break your spirit. It was mm -hmm. done publicly so that any person who had the same idea mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. will abandon that idea because death will come. And the disciples of Jesus were really scared too. When they saw him die in such a manner, they went into hiding. They went into hiding. And it's when he was risen from the dead and appeared to them. It's that gave them the impetus to, to get out and, and spread the message that, yes, Jesus is alive. And that's where Easter really begins. The resurrection of, of Jesus, that he's no longer dead in a tomb, helpless because the Romans put him to death, mm. but that he's alive and that he's alive in the hearts of, of his disciples. And mm. that was the message that was spread throughout the world. Amazing. Fantastic. Mr. Kisun. Well, we, we go alphabetically. So mm. let's go to Ronald. Ronald, um, how long have you been a practitioner of Christianity? I'd say for a very long time. Right. Well, I'd known you in the late <laughs> 80s, and uh -huh. before then, mm -hmm. you were uh, a practitioner of Christianity. The, I know the church that you belong to, it has a, 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 a charity side to it. Oh, orphanage, the orphanage take care yes. of the destitute children. I know you've, mm -hmm. been, you've been running that thing for a long time. Is it going okay? Yeah, since in the, in the 70s. Is it called the Joshua House? Yes. The Joshua House, yes. Since yeah. the 70s, we started to take care of children on who were in unfortunate circumstances. So we made it possible for them to restore their life and to become quality citizens in our society. So we've been working on it since. Well, we got to make, um, Akash and I have to make a donation. I've known you such a long time. I don't think I've made a donation. But I will ask uh, Reverend Porter the same question I'm asking you now. What is the most uh, important day in the Christian ca calendar, emotionally, historically? That is the day. Which is the day? There's, there are three national holidays, Christian holidays. It may not fall within those three days. There's Christmas, Good Friday, and there's Easter Monday. Maybe there's another day, but which is the one? I know for um, for, for the Muslim, Eid al Azhar, Eid al then Muslim, Hindus, the Wali, which is the most important one that one can say brings an emotional attachment to Christians? Yeah, then resurrection. So that would be Easter yes, Monday. Yes, that's that the key point. Today. But the thing is, is that you gotta learn to love. You gotta got to learn to love God first. You know, Jesus said, "Love God with all your heart, mind, body, and soul." Now, ask ourselves, what does that really mean? What what does to love God unconditionally really, really means? It is not an easy something. It's a process that you're going through that can give you 
the real depth of what a true son or daughter of God. As Dr. Porter said earlier on, you know, you had a Garden of Eden with Adam and Eve walking in there, and they were supposed to accomplish, make the Creator happy with their presence. But we saw that they became influenced by Lucifer, who made them feel that they can achieve special status, but they did not really grasp that they needed to become so clear that the pain he felt with nails being driven into his hands, that pain was supposed to stir up an aspect of human experience so that we can become worthy of the sacrifices that are being made. For us here today, are we only, are we worthy? Let's ask ourselves individually. Do we really, are we really worthy of the sacrifices that is made by Messiah? Those sacrifices made also brings about the, the texture that went on inside of the, of the Messiah, as that Jesus is called, the Messiah. But we are still in a position, even after his 2,000 years, are we really making the ideal effort to become worthy of the offerings that was made. So even the best of us, as I understand it, even the best of us has depth to, to cover. And I think that's the reason why <clears throat> the reason we that we feel that pain with nails being driven into the hands and the feet so that that can stir up an aspect within mankind that is not just temporary or short distance away but far you're looking at this entire universe and what it really means to the creator he wants his children to experience this process so that the resurrection means that the effect that's going on inside of you is so vast, it's so spiritually deep and wide that it is an experience when you have it, when you get it, you would never want to let loose of it. Dr. Porter, um, that's it. The, I I thought Christmas was the Christian day, but um, well, well, let me say um, Easter. <laughs> well, understand that that Christianity has several branches. And oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to talk about that. Yeah. Different groups, um, but the, the the truth is, if you throw away one, you you're going to be off balance. It's like the tripod. Mm. Um, you take away one leg, then the, thing uh, collapses. The, the, the whole thing collapses. So um, Christmas, Good Friday, Easter, Easter Sunday, Sunday uh, the, the day that... Mm. He, uh, Sunday. Sunday. So it's risen from the dead. Those, those are all crucial aspects of the of orthodox Christian thinking. You, if you, because the thinking is, if Jesus didn't born, if he wasn't born, if he didn't come into the world, then there was no, there would have been no death and and, and resurrection. So understand that yes, his this babe coming into the world at Christmas, as we as we call it and celebrate, that's an important part 
of it too. And then his dying, um, um, taking on the sins of entire humankind and him being raised from the dead in, in hope and, and new life. Um, the, the, you can't separate, separate them. Um, I remember picking up an issue with one of our reporters who had um, written in one of the dailies that uh, Good Friday is the most solemn day in the, in the Christian calendar. Um, maybe so, maybe so, but it's not all wrapped around that solemn because right after then, um, there's resurrection. Um, so where there was sadness and pain and grief and sorrow, it's turned into joy and happiness and celebration on, on, on Resurrection Day. All right. So um, I don't want to pit one day against the other um, because all three are important. It, it depends on the individuals uh, to some extent. Um, some are more um, leaning on the side where they see the glass half full. So they will say, well, that, that Good Friday day wasn't a Good Friday. They killed the man. They made him fetch his cross. They beat him. 39 lashes he got and his back was all lacerated and bleeding. They put a crown of thorns on his head and guy knees thorn, plim plop. Mm -hmm. You couldn't shake it, you couldn't shake it off. So it was, it was pressing in right there and, and, and all of that. And then the crowd was taunting him. You know, if you are the son of God, indeed, why don't you come down from the cross and we will believe you. Um, and then there were two thieves who were crucified on either side of, of him. They got in on the act for a bit until one changed. And he came to the realization and he said to Jesus, yeah. remember me when you get into mm -hmm. your kingdom. He understood that Jesus was about a kingdom and that he was a king of a kingdom that was not of this world. He understood that. And, uh, and so was able to accept what Jesus said to him on the cross. This day, you will be with me in, in paradise. So you, if you look at that one day, yes, um, but there's another day, a day of joy that he didn't stay dead, can't keep a good man down. You know about that, Freddie. Yeah, we should play that song. <laughs> yeah. James and Bobby Purify, <laughs> one of the singers of that soul song in the seventies. Oh, okay. You know that song? No, you can keep a good man down. All right, we should, you we go. We play, we play a piece. Um, anyway, yeah. Yes, um, Rev Reverend Porter, I, I'll set, give this question to you mm -hmm. um, first. Everything about Jesus mm -hmm. was miraculous. Right. Even the birth it's of Jesus, miracle. Even life. before he was born, his Mary, Mary visited an older woman who was never supposed. You know, she wasn't yeah. pregnant for. I think she was in her eighties. Yeah, she was old. And mm -hmm. she was very old. And then she goes like, "What? You pregnant?" Mm -hmm. And she was, you know, she said, "Well, it's a miracle of God." And but I believe that she was being prepared for when her miracle comes. Right. And everything about Jesus's life seems there was many. There were many miracles about you know in his life. Tell me about this miracle. Miracle worker, way maker. Okay, all right. Uh, and it's not just a song. Yes, it's, it's, what it's not he, just a song. Yeah, he, he actually is. He, he did lots of miracles during his his lifetime, as you correctly alluded. His birth was a miracle. Um, here was this virgin um, engaged to be married, mm -hmm. and then found out that she was pregnant. And first of all, she had to convey to this man that she is engaged to that she is pregnant. The man Joseph, uh, he wasn't buying that. <laughs> He's not different from any man today. He's not buying that. But he knew the penalty that if you are found pregnant, unmarried, that then you're going to be stoned to death. So he planned to break off the engagement quietly 
and, and just move away and leave her. And the angel of God appeared to him that night and said, take that same woman to be your wife. Um, because what is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit of God. This is not human doing. So she didn't go with a guy somewhere. Or, uh, I know. Uh, no, no. This, she was pure. And, um, and she said, well, that's a miracle. How does that happen? Well, if God is creator and he is, um, he can speed up the... The process. the process of, of uh, scientific processes, if you like, mm -hmm. and he can slow them down also mm -hmm. because he's God. He's control of the entire uh, universe. And um, and, um, and I suppose you have experienced that with others, that there are those who do all the right things and still don't get pregnant. Mm -hmm. They, they, they do what they're supposed to do. They go to fertility clinics even. They don't get pregnant. And here's one who didn't uh, do any of the things. No wasn't sexually mm. involved and got pregnant. Um, that was the working of an al almighty God. And so it took some persuasion on the part of the one that he, she was engaged to. And he accepted that this was from God. And he became the human father. But he understood with clarity that there was a heavenly father. And that, uh, that he himself uh, would be subject to that heavenly father. All right. So all throughout uh, miracles. And part of those miracles had to do with death. He constantly dealt with death. In human experience, we always have to deal with death. Death of relatives and loved ones and, and all of that and the Bible records the incident that there's a funeral procession mm -hmm. a widow is going to bury her only son and the, the procession is they're making their way to the, uh, the burial ground and um, he saw the sadness and all of that and he stopped the procession and called the young man to get up and life came back into his his being that was miraculous that was miraculous then there's a story of lazarus um man with the sores yeah no <laughs> no <laughs> that's that joke that, that, that's yeah. another one that there's a lazarus with the sores yeah, how you say it you're not religious <laughs> i know but, this but you know christianity yeah was the major religion oh, okay. during the colonial times. So you know, you know some of the things. Lazarus had souls. Yes, that was another Lazarus. Lazarus. That's a lot of Lazarus. <laughs> this Lazarus uh, was sick and then died. Um, he and his sisters were close to Jesus. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha. Mm -hmm. And um, so they sent a message to Jesus and said, Lazarus is very sick. You need to come and pray for him or do something. And Jesus took time in getting there and when he got there found out that Lazarus was already dead four days and um, he wept with them he wept he actually wept his shortest verse in the Bible Jesus wept, Jesus wept. Mm -hmm. All right. so he identifies with us in our pain and uh, but it also proves that he's human mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and then he comes and he, with his all his godly powers, he has to be taken to the tomb. And he says, Lazarus, come forth. And this man who was dead came out of the tomb. Uh, the scriptures will tell us that he still had the grave clothes wrapped around him. They were, that was the practice in the day, mm -hmm. that they will wrap the body and put spices in between to preserve it. See, Guyanese have their own way of doing it now. They spray. <laughs> you notice that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, everybody put a little perfume and cologne. Sometimes the most expensive of colognes. On the, uh, I wish they'd done that when the guy was alive. Anyhow, <laughs> um, he asked that the grave clothes be taken off from him. Um, significant of the fact that um, he needed 
uh, a new start in life too. Um, that there was those dead clothes would, would, would have been hindering him mm-hmm. and uh, that had to be removed. So those were miracles that, that, that Jesus did uh, along the course of his lifetime. So it's no surprise that his resurrection is also a miracle. Mm, so All right? There were miracles right along the journey mm-hmm. of life. And so as he comes to this point, when they uh, think that they have him now, he's dead, he's buried, his disciples have run away because they are afraid that they would be next. Um, and then in the midst of all of that, he appears to them on the third day. Maybe I should talk a little bit about the third day because it was a Friday that he was put to death. In the Jewish calendar, um, Friday would have been day one and Saturday, day two and Sunday, day three. And so it's on the third day that he that he rose again in power and in triumph and and um, all the dead clothes kicked off and um, and made his presence felt with, with his disciples. The Bible says he made over 40 appearances to folks just to convince them that he was no longer dead. But now he is ascending back to heaven to be with his father. Dr. McGowell, I don't know how I could bring myself to call you Dr. McGowell, although you're Reverend Dr. McGowell. I've known you for so long, and we have gelled as friends. The Christian religion, um, you are satisfied that in the 21st century in Guyana, that the Christian religion is alive and well and thriving? Mm. Yeah. From your, from your church that you mm. preside over? You satisfy yeah. that your your parishioners are listening to the word of God. Yes. Well, you know, we are at different levels, but nevertheless, <clears throat> we are making an an effort because remember that without restoration, terrible things can happen in this world that we're living in right now. So people need to understand that we, the process of res- resurrection, we need to restore our people. Each and every one needs to know and understand why, what is our real purpose in this life and try our sincerest best to fulfill that purpose. Because if we don't, then it's amazing what could happen. Some people, there are those who don't understand that we can fix things by putting the best effort that we've ever had into our lifestyle. So we need to come to the realization that we are living in in the most crucial time in human history. It can be a time when we destroy ourselves and then we will punish forever. And no one wants that. But we need to come to a clear understanding that we need to live the true way of life so that we can be truly blessed. We can become worthy of being called children of of God. So we are indeed in a crucial stage of our existence that we need to understand what it really means to live a true way of life to fulfill our true purpose of why we are here. For years, we we have been here. And what have we done with the period of time? When we 
become restored beings, then we will experience true joy and happiness. Our Creator wants us to love Him the way He loves us. So we must understand that and make the sincerest of effort to make an ideal, to make ideal families most of all. Relationship is the key component in this entire universe. Everything in this entire universe is about relationship. What we put into it is what is most, most important. So we need to put our sincerest effort so that we can, as we relate to each other, we can bring about the kind of results that we will be able to hold on to forever and ever. I'm sure that you have come into contact with people who don't care about church, who don't care about mosque or temple or there are people who don't care about those things. First of all, if they don't understand it, so they just push it aside. But from what we have been learning in our teachings is that we need to work towards our resurrection, our cleansing of our being, cleaning out ourselves spiritually, physically. We need to become totally cleansed. So it is something that we have to work on with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. We are given the opportunity and we got to try our utmost best. Okay, Yukash? Yeah. Um, look, uh, and before time run out on this, I have to get this in. I grew up in a, on an island called Wakenham. And at, at Easter, long before Easter, we used to make, I we used to start making the two point kite, the caddy or punch kite. And I used to get E.T. Pinter and start framing kites and so on. My, 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 my remembrance of Easter, I have great, great memories of Easter. Easter over, over, over the years, um, decades, has not just become, is not just significant of a religious holiday in Guyana also, but it's, a, it's part of our cultural heritage these days. You gentlemen want to share a little bit of, of Easter past, perhaps you too, Mr. Kisun. Easter past, well, as a young boy growing up, oh, so what are some of the fond memories you have? Pastor, um, <laughs> Otto? Sure, Where you grow up? All, all right. I grew up right here in Georgetown. Okay. <laughs> on the street here. In Queenstown. You're right Queenstown here wow. on the Looney Street, Queenstown. Yeah. Um, so when you were growing up, you never believed that you see this church when you, because the church in Nazi is very old. Yeah. So you would not have believed that when you're passing the Looney Street and you see this large church, and one day you will be the presiding um, no, pastor? No, I think he did. Yeah. You must have placed it in your heart. <laughs> you have to place it in your no, heart. No, <laughs> that, 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 that was completely out for me. I wasn't thinking about that. I wasn't, no, no, no. You didn't have the call to God, is it? No, 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 but it came. It came and it tell, happened. Tell us how it came. Um, it started, my, uh, the spiritual journey started. In the Bible, uh, you'll call that the road to Damascus? <laughs> that's a different thing. Well, um, that's not when you see the light. Right, yeah, yeah. you could call it that because yeah. that's the Apostle Paul's experience and the road of Damascus. He was hostile to, to Christianity and then had an experience yeah. with a light yeah. shining brightly. brightly. It blinded him and that changed his life completely because he heard the voice of God speaking to him. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? And um, and well, from there on, his life changed. He's written the greatest amount of books in the in the New Testament, mm -hmm. but it all started back with that with that experience. For me, um, I had grown up in and around the church, um, so I knew the church was there. I knew the 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 Bible was there. I knew Jesus was That's there. That's the church your parents went to church of the Nazarene. Um, no, in fact, they didn't really go, but they sent us. 
Oh, no, okay. they, they sent <laughs> us. Um, in fact, mm. my mom was more connected with the church that uh, Family Federation, Family World Federation for World Peace. So, um, Family Federation for World Peace. Yeah, that started and, in and unification, yeah, unification yeah. church. So, which started in South Korea. In Korea. Um, so my mom was more connected to to, to, to that church. Um, so, so these two pastors know each other well. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, I've known Ronald for <laughs> since nineteen. In the 70s, 70, the early 70s. 75. Yes, in okay. the early 70s. 75, that's I, more I, than 50 years. Yes, yeah, so I've known him for a very, very long time, and, and, the, and the church that he's connected okay. with. Were. But I had friends who would come near to this one, and because I lived nearby, it mm -hmm. wasn't hard for them to invite me. And um, we played volleyball out on the, the lawns, and played cricket too, um, right there in the churchyard. It's a big church there. Oh, oh yeah. Church of the Nazi. Uh, yes. A big, a big yard space yeah, too. Right. <laughs> yes. well, there was a building there. I always tell pe guests when they cannot find the place, mm -hmm. I say Laluni and Irving Street. Mm -hmm. There is a huge church. I have never missed that word, huge or big. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they cannot miss this big church in the corner of the Lunian Irving. And they find it because of that uh, description. Yeah, yes. Because mm -hmm. yeah. you're driving and you say at the Luni and Irving, then you see this big, huge church. Well, you, you, you probably owe me too because lots of people kept come looking for the, the building and I just happened to be... Oh, you here. tell them right here. And you tell them, oh, you're yeah. right there, you're right there. Yeah. Um, so, but this um, little boy that grew, that growing up and yes, kite um, making and so on, tell um, us your experiences in Georgetown. Um, we made kites. We um, it was an entire family activity. Mm -hmm. uh, my father leading the the trust sort of and um, giving us pointers, which you had to make your your own kite. Mm -hmm. um, prior to Easter Monday, um, soon as school closed, that's where we started with the caddy old punch. Yeah, we used to go Kelly Dam. No, no, it was DCC, the okay. cricket ground right um, mm. across there was our place. Um, but as um, on Easter Monday, it was the National Park okay. that we would, we, we would go with friends and family and, and food, uh, of course. So uh, kite flying has, and I realized, I didn't realize until I started traveling throughout the Caribbean, that it was an event almost singular to Guyana. That what we, I just thought that if we're doing this Easter time, mm -hmm. that others were doing it too. No, that's not the, that's not the case. Yes, other places fly kites. In and, summer. Uh, yes, <laughs> summertime, yeah. uh, even Christmas time, mm -hmm. I've seen that. But uh, not the profusion of kites. No, in the nothing sky, like Guyana. As in no, Guyana. Nothing no. like Guyana. I came from the sea wall. Uh, you know, um, yesterday, um, and the they already kites, had so kites out there, testing out quite and, a lot. Uh, okay. So, where what kite has to do with the with the Christian uh, thing? There's nothing, absolutely nothing, in the Holy Scriptures about kite and flying. Um, I was listening to our old priests from the Catholic Church. No, 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 no. I I really thought. That's a Christian thing. Oh, oh, when well, you're not part of the well, thing, let, you me, know let, me, let me tell you what this priest said: that the kite flying was actually just a symbolism, mm. just as how Christ rose from the dead and, and risen and in the air. Um, that that this thing about kite flying, this kite being held and and mounted and then mm. goes up way up in the sky is symbolic of of christ being Re risen from the dead but in the scriptures there's absolutely nothing of that and so so they some, don't have that in italy and in the philippines those not, not huge catholic uh, countries uh, uh, like in latin america they don't have the people flying kites not that i am aware of they not don't fly not, kites east not not and, and yeah. in italy <laughs> flying kites and the, and, and the, the amount of of, of, of effort as they're putting together to make this Easter Monday thing such a big thing here in, um, in Guyana 
it's 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 uniquely Guyanese, you know. It's Guyanese. Uniquely how, Guyanese. how many years both of you individually flew kites? <laughs> I since flew I kites. A, since I was a child. Oh, okay. We were flying kites. So you were a kite man and you were Yes, and yeah. when I didn't have my own kite, I just took a little flying from my friend. Mm -hmm. I just want to fly for 10 minutes and hold it and, uh, and hear the kite sing and, and all mm -hmm. that. That's a marvelous experience. Yeah. My father and my uncles, they, all of them flew kites. Yeah. So we, we, it's something that we grew up you know, um, as a matter of fact, when they didn't have enough proper wood, they would take some pointers and put it through a leaf of exercise leaf or something like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, 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 I know about that. I know about that. I know about that in oh, what when we were growing up. Uh, uh, share share your experiences, Freddie. No, I just know about that. Uh, no, I, I, I hardly um I, I don't think I was into that. I was I don't know, maybe I, I grew up in a Hindu family, but I never um But being on the sea wall every day of yeah, your yeah, life. Yeah, I no, I never I, I never did. Wow. I never did. But I know about um little boy in school mm -hmm. with that that that, that, that <laughs> exercise book page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know about that. Can you old punch you call it? Yeah, yeah. Can, yeah. You call it can you old punch. But, but, but where punch. where I where I came from in India, as you go where we were from, they were intricately made kites. You know, the star pint and the double star and five mm -hmm. stars and so on. And they've got to cut these things with little, little piece of paper. And if there is, they make one one slip and cut a, a string, the whole project is, is mm. over. you 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 got to start back. Mm. And it, it, we used to use the ite pint. Ite. Mm -hmm. yeah, so right it was stronger, faster. it was more durable. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Pastor Magalhaes, before, um, when you look at these things, when you sit down here, you chat, interestingly, time fly. For for a Philistine like me, what is the part of the Bible that you would recommend one uh, uh, an outsider read? Which which part of it? Mm. If you was to say to, to me, um, Frederick, I'd like you to read this part, and you will see a, 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 a different side to life. Which part of the Bible would that be? Quickly. I'm not getting you. Okay. What, what Freddie well, let me, let me yeah. help you oh, out there. Okay. Okay. I would recommend, I would recommend the Gospel of John. Yeah. The Gospel of John. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. John. Yeah. I would recommend that. That's you, what I'm talking about. Oh. You, you, you oh, read okay. through, you read through the, 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 the Gospel of John. It, it, it gives the Gospel, uh, it just keeps flowing. Uh, the life of Christ and how people started connecting with him and how he connected with people and it ends with his resurrection where were you trained i was trained in trinidad at a, a bible college in santa cruz trinidad and that was must have been a long time ago oh that's in the early 80s the mid 80s so you've been a, a, a reverend preaching the word of christianity for a long time for a long time mm -hmm. Just a like, well, no, you, you, you were you were ever in South Korea? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, South Korea, Japan, Brazil, Suriname, the, Barbados. Your churches are uh, your churches. Yes, very, I, I've, I've been to about um, to five or six countries. Which your church? Church activities, yeah. Yeah. Tell our viewers the name of the church again, please. Hmm? The, the name of the church again, the Family Federation for World Peace Family and Unification. Family Federation, and it started in South Korea. In South Korea, and now, right. um, I, well, well, since I've known you, I've known you established that church a long time in Guyana. Um, well, actually, the missionary who started it here is the daughter of Iaboros. She came. The famous Iaboros. Yeah, his daughter, who came to Guyana sat in the, the missionary work for Family Federation for World Peace. Well, I've known, I've known you associated with that church for a very long time. But the church is all right. It's growing and it's there. Mm. Pastor, um, Church of the Nazarene, you, you, um, you have space for a lot of parishioners in that church, given oh, its size. Oh, oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. And um, well, the church, well, let me go back to a question you asked um, Ronald earlier about maybe the relevance of Christianity um, 
today. I still believe, yes, it's relevant, but the church has changed over the, the years. Uh, for example, the group that I grew up with here in this church, they're not there anymore. They have, some have migrated, some have gone to, um, some of them have taken up leadership in churches in other uh, places, but it's not this, the same group. And so a different group comes with, with, with different things and all of that, right? I was part of a group was was very sports-minded, um, played sports all the time, and, um, and that was their way of drawing people to the church as well. They had a national cricketer that lived just across the world there, Andrew Jackman. And um, he would he would be involved in the, in the in the in the cricket games too, and played cricket there and and, and, and volleyball and um, so sports was a big thing. But this current group, that's not such a, a, a big thing with them. Uh, okay. Um, operator signals we have about five minutes more to go, mm -hmm. but. Here in, in modern times, everybody's looking for, look at, you know, you want to like and you want people to follow you. Jesus Christ has the largest following on this planet. He mm -hmm. did it without social media. He did it without, without going, you know, it's just the way, is it, is it just, is it his, his lifestyle? Is it the way he lived that really, you know, captured people's imagination and attention in, in, uh, because we want to close on that because the season is because of the of the of the Christ right. and in, in, in shortly if you can um... yes I believe so his life and message mm -hmm. uh, what he preached and, and proclaimed um, that is what appealed to, to people back then and still appeals to people um, today that there's something about this one who declared that I am the way the truth and the life and no man can come to the father except through me that has resonated with people right across the world and persons have surrendered their lives to to his lordship and his rulership and it's amazing the way it, it happens but it, it happens people acknowledge him and they and they choose to to follow him so there's something about that message that that rings true to many many people across the world and the miracles that the people who um, <clears throat> who he was able to raise up and then because of those blessings we find that people found a reason to follow the teachings so we are living in a in a crucial time, as a matter as a matter of fact, I can say right now, you know, almost every afternoon for the last few hours when I turn on the, the news, overseas news, I am concerned about the attitude of some of these leaders right now, world leaders, and <clears throat> some countries the position that they're taking up. I'm hoping and praying that we don't get a World War Three. <laughs> well, the signs are there according to according to the scriptures of all the all major, major religions. Many of the signs are there, but the best we can do is to hope and to pray. Um, but, but Ronald, before time goes, in those 33 countries you visited with your church, was there any time that you were based in a country there, or you were always in Guyana? Because well, I know church people, Muslim, mm -hmm. Hindus, Christians, they were always attached to different churches in different yeah. countries. I spent four years in Jamaica, and, and, and um, eight months in um, New York. With the church? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You led the church in Jamaica. You led the church in Jamaica in those four years. And, yeah. mm -hmm. and since then, they, they, they're still going strong there. Yeah. Okay. And um, the, have, you served, have you served in any other Christian church in the world or in the Caribbean? Well, 
I've always served in the Church of the Nazarene, but I've also served as the chairman of the Ghana Council of Churches, which is a, a grouping of 16 different denominations. denominations. Catholic, Anglican, Methodist, Methodist mm -hmm. Moravian, Presbyterian, and there are two kinds mm -hmm. of Presbyterians, two kinds of AME, um, Salvation Army. Um, Seventh-day Adventists? Uh, no, no, they're not part of it that we collaborated with them but uh, so the I Baha'i is part of the Ghana Council Church no uh -uh. in fact Baha'i don't describe themselves as Christian oh, oh, oh. <laughs> they, they, they <laughs> oh the Baha'i Church is not a Christian they, Church that's no. how they describe themselves they're separate yeah they're, mm. they're separate distinct and make uh, Remember, we have the inter, the IRO. The interreligious inter religious or, 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 You helped to fund the interreligious organization. You were one of the funders. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you were one of the funders of that. Yeah. That, that brings together different religions, right? Mm -hmm. Right, correct. Mm -hmm. you, you're part of it. I'm part of it. In the initial days, I can't keep up with But we need to tell our viewers you're part of a very important <laughs> constitutional body, Ethnic <laughs> Relations Commission. <laughs> Yes, mm -hmm. I am. You represent I, the Christian, I'm the Christian yeah. representative on the Ethnic Relations Commission, and we came into office last year, and we'll serve for a three-year term, and then our time will expire. Yes. Okay, Akash. All right. So um, it was a really amazing sit down and, and having to, you know this this conversation about Easter, the reason for Easter, and understanding the 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 Christ. That, that this all is being centered around. And having you both here, Pastor Mag um, Reverend McGarrell and Reverend um, Porter. Porter, it's really, I, I, I know that our viewers are, would have enjoyed this conversation because okay. it brings a lot, to, a, a lot and we would like to extend this invitation that we, we, we want to have you again here um, for another, another program whenever the time comes. It's Easter, I don't know if you both would like to say, Anything for Easter to the, to the viewers as we close off? Well, happy Easter to, to all of you. Um, I'm, I know when you're, you've come, you're hearing this at the, almost at the end of Easter, but I, it's my prayer that you'll be safe. Um, most churches are open on Good Friday. Um, slip in for an hour, spend some little time, get to understand. Um, a little bit as well um, but I am praying God's blessings over your lives and your families that this Easter time will be a time of reflection as well uh, as we as we go through this celebration of Jesus being raised from the dead God bless you yes hopefully this is a period of time when there will be great miracles in our lives we need miracles because when miracles are experience then it gives us reason to be committed and we need more hard working and committed people who will bring about the kind of results that we can be proud of and eventually make our country better so as we celebrate this easter let us do so with all our heart, mind, body, and soul. And give God the praise and all the glory. Wonderful. Mr. Kisun? Well, it was nice having the Christian angle to this program. We've had the Muslim angle. We've had the Hindu angle. And it's nice to have the, the Christian angle. When all is said and done, um, religion does play a part in telling people that there's a right path to life and that people are worth it and we must take care of people. Um, Reverend Dr. Porter, thanks for being here. I can't say Reverend Dr. McGarvey. Yeah, no, no, thanks for being here. Uh, right. Reverend Dr. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. All right. Viewers, okay. thank you so much for joining us for this wonderful Easter program that we had today, this evening. I trust that you enjoyed it. I trust that you take away something from what the, the two learned gentlemen had sa um, said. And we hope that you can join us again when our next program comes up on Wednesday.